every one of those cuffs is back. Yeah, and that's gonna work as we jump into the draft here. Game number two. Let's see how they adjust. Once again, I would agree with both drafts previous game, but Anik was able to flip the script in that one. So how are the adjustments gonna be made? They're on the blue, Devu on the red. All right, so Devu's gonna choose red side this time. Um, yesterday, the, the stats did get a little skewed, but blue still seems to be the favorite, but Devu, I think, want that two pick bounce back. Bans, yeah. looking a little bit different already. Onik banning out the Minotaur early on, to whereas last game, that was not even on the, on the list at all for them. Onik banning out AoE protection here from the Nether Realm as well as the Minuan Fury. So this perhaps show a little bit about what they're... Maybe they want to play a catch composition, right? Or just want to try to slow down. If I'm down. wrong, just tell me I'm wrong. I, I, I can't control my emotions. You're not wrong. I just never know. On, okay. Coach Eb's that good. No. Oh. I, he's that good. Come on, man. He's that good. I never know, <laughs> what man. What you say earlier, he just shows up with the phone. <laughs> you know, you know. it's funny if you look at... I wish there was coach head-to-heads, right? In terms of like... I mean, now we see Yeb and Fly Solos what, No, like, what do they bring? Oh. Like, we most saw, banned picks or yeah. something for them? Like, what's no, their most common no, what's bands? No, what's the equipment? Yeah, what's the equipment they bring to the, the for draft? It, Fly Soul is bringing a book. Oh. Mr. Oh. Mao brought a piece of paper. Okay, I, <laughs> Mr. Mao brought if, a singular I'm, piece of paper. If I'm a coach, I'll bring a PC. A whole PC. <laughs> I'll set it up. You know what Leo I'll would bring? Leo would bring a then. tablet. Leo would bring a tablet. Yeah. That's why I'm better than Greek. What would, what would Wolf bring? I Nothing, will, he's got a brain. Wolf will oh, bring a home theater. <laughs> Yeah, actually, that's true. Right? Every time Wolf right? travels, he brings so much. He would be, like, podcasting up there or yeah. something, right? Oh, he'd bring a guest. Either. He'd bring a guest. <laughs> either ways, there's Volt betting out three junglers here. Guinevere, Nolan, as well as the Joy. Onik betting out the Paramus, Minotaur, as well as the Bruno. And first Wait. picking. I feel like this is months ago. Like, we've we've taken three steps back in the meta. Fredrin first pick. Leaderboard up there as well. Sao now six at six. In all-time M-Series assist leaders with 318 assists surpassing Moon in this series. I feel like he could have jumped higher if he didn't tick the, those kills when he was playing the Diggy. That's true. I, I think he should just first pick Diggy right now. I don't hate it. I just it. want it. You just because want you him? see, yeah, okay, I want him. Here's, the, here's the crazy thing, right? <laughs> having Kyrie on the having Frederick, you would assume is going to the jungle. What if they do it again? And Boots uses Frederick. Merkel hates this. Let me know that. Merkel hates this, but who knows? XP Fred. Merkel hates it, but maybe that's why Onik will do it. I mean, even if it, for example, if it's AP Bren, like you never know, they could put it in the mid lane. They've done yeah. that. Yeah, they have done that. They can do whatever so, they want. Yeah. That's one, okay. I will say. You can do whatever you want. I can. You can. <laughs> Frederick, the fact that you can flex him is kind of still the scary thing, but most likely, let's just assume. They're going to play the safe route, go in the jungle. My yeah, buddy. We got to say, Fredrin is flexing. Look at his poetry, man. Yeah. I didn't That's Moba Fred right there. I heard Fred. Moba Fred. All right. I see you. Moba I Fred. see you. Moba Fred. He's here, by the way. Shout I out think. to Moba Fred. Yeah. Yeah, but he doesn't hear us in the audience. It's the Tagala broadcast. But either ways, showing the Valentina, at least we know it's not mid. At least we know it's not Sans on this... Uh, <laughs> Frederick. But now having the Angela, I, I personally do still prefer Angela Rome rather yeah. than Angela Mint because sometimes it feels like not enough damage. Maybe even a, a Lilia here would be great. Oh, yeah. right. I mean, Lilia's been a monster. I think it would fit very well. You're a monster. Well. You're a monster. Thank you. You're welcome. Lilia, talk about Lilia. You Lilia. threw him off his it's point. It's a great man. pick. It's a great pick. Pain. That's all. You, you, threw you actually make Still analyzing alive. so easy for me because I just have to say like two <laughs> words, you interrupt me, and then it's, it makes the desk because. You know, normally I do the play-by-play, -play, so I'm, I'm over here. I'm a little bit. I'm like taking notes, but you got it. it's. Thank you. Trex honestly. gets three I mean words that honestly. in. I'll bring extra mints next time. Next, like if I had like someone else anchoring right now, I'd have to talk too much. Oh, there's some familiar faces, by the way, in the crowd. From Is that the Gideon? old. No, I'm just <laughs> Is that Gideon? No. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, Kelra, right? Man. Yeah, Kelra. Yeah, Kelra. Kelra at the max, and uh, I did. I didn't catch the screen on the last one. Either way, now thinking of bands here, because for both teams, uh, theory theoretically, we have the jugglers. Confirmed, we have the gold leaders. So now, there's Wolf, they're betting out the Matilda. At this point, I kind of feel like it's hard to ban against Keyboy. He's shown that if you don't give him anything tanky, he'll take something Dimaji. Dimash. Like, I'm good. Was that the I'm good one? No. What's I'm good? 
you just no said, damage, damage. Da oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry. Damage, damage. <laughs> Tracks. I thought is we still were speaking more Malaysian. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look at the AOE setups that's been banned out by Onyx. They're still cooking, and I'm hungry. Man, this is a weird thing to see that Tigreal has now, like, had so much of an impact that he's actually banned out. You want to say something, Trex? I mean, Tigreal's a monster. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> right, cool. Tigreal's a monster. So, but here's the thing. I feel like those are the things that Devu kind of wants. They do have the Angela, yes. I mean, it could be like Rome, but I think most likely it's mid-Angela, right? Yeah. So they keep on banning out. Like, they ban out the Tigreal here. I think it would fit well for them. They get first pick on the, you know, being, they get first pick on the next pick, so... What are they going for again? The Matildas this banned out. I feel like they're banning what against themselves right now a little bit. I, I still feel like Lilia is great, but you know what? Nice is great. What do you think? Let's. I'm, I want to take a look at the XP lane, right? Because Terizzo's banned out. Lapu Lapu. Is that? Uh, Diggy. Oh, oh, Arlot. Arlo. Arlo. Diggy doesn't sound <laughs> <Arlo>. <laughs> No. It's like, if Diggy sounded like that, I don't know what kind of Diggy you're playing, man. I don't know what voice pack you have I in the game. I feel alone. That's the, never mind. <laughs> Welcome to the Chad voice pack, where every hero just had a Chad voice. It's like, it's nothing but Arlo. It's nothing but Fredrin. <laughs> it's nothing but, like, all the, who else? Yu Zong. Yeah. And it's nice you voicing them all. Oh, that works. That Honestly, works you, you, just nicely like hoot hoot. Hoot hoot. <laughs> don't st don't start. Don't start. I don't know if you heard what happened to the wild card. <laughs> what happened? I do what I want. Let's not talk about Let's it. Get Let's get back to the draft. Let's get back again. So this is going to be Jungler Fredrin, and the last pick here, Roamer, is going to be the Cho. Maybe that's why they battle a lot of AOE stuff. Yeah, it makes it easier for the Cho to pick anyone off. Definitely easier for the Cho to pick anything off, but this is once again, once again. Diggy question mark. Diggy question mark. Diggy question mark. I mean, there's not a whole, but the problem is they have the Valentina, so that's kind of like, it kind of makes the Diggy much more weak. And also with the Angela, do you really want to be that squishy in the laning yeah. phase? Do you really want to, you know, put that much? In? It just seems you have a, a very weak laning phase. Both you have two supports essentially, nothing to stop them if they want to invade. It's but a problem. Pretend if she's not there. Who? Who's she? Valentina. Just pretend? Yeah. Is that your goal? I mean, <laughs> she's there. She's locked in LaBelle. That's We can't pretend. Yeah, but it's a mental thing. Remember it's that's a, a mental Kip Bomba thing. Said. It's a Kip Bomba mentality. The Just pretend that's not a problem. Novaria. Novaria. Right. So this is going to be an Angela room. Definitely. Trax, if you disagree, you can you can no, say you disagree. I mean, I guess you could do either one Rome, right? Let's assume Angela Rome. Angela Rome. But still, it's a very weak laning phase. It's only it's weak. very invadable. It's only weak if you think it's weak. It's all about mindset. Your mentality, Trex. You have to have a mentality of an right, Give us the intro, of LaBelle. Instinct give us the dinosaur. intro. We're jumping to the land of dawn. No, we gotta we gotta we break gotta it down. Go. We gotta break it down. Dude. He's throwing you off, man. Dude, <laughs> this is your moment. <laughs> Analyze. All right, let's take a look at this uh, team comparison. Right now, Onik does have the better draft by the stats, of course by the stats. They have a little bit more CC, they have the Cho, and I think the Cho is gonna be a great answer when we look at this Novaria. It's something that can get back to that backside, and you pair that up with the Valentina, it looks like a very rough first five minutes for the side of Devu. We're going to jump into the game where the mindset is the key. If you think you're gonna win, you're gonna win. If the opponent is a problem, pretend it's not a problem. Let's jump into the line of dawn. Will this Valentina be a problem? For this Ooh. There's the flex, Kyrie. They, oh. They, oh! Yo, shout out to Mirko, it's a Fredrin EXP. <laughs> I like that even as an anchor, I can call things out. Who would have thought? They just switch it up, you know? They uh, like how to do, switch it up. How do we feel about the uh, Don Ross jungle, though? I mean, Look we've seen it done face. before. Yes. See, I'm happy. You're not. Dude, You're frowning. Don't. No, I'm not. Dude, don't lie to the audience. I'm grinning. All right. So you feel good about it? No, we got to talk about, to the analyst. What do you think, Trex? I, th I think the Fredrin could actually have a decent matchup up against Kid Bomba, depending, depending how you time the taunt. Yep. If Kid Bomba tries to you know, dash in close to you, get that Dauntless onto you, then there's some possibilities there to maybe taunt him up, stop him in his tracks, and slow things down a little bit. 
speaking of slowing things now, this Dale Support want to slow down their tempo here just because they have the Novaria. They need at least two to three items to make sure that the meteors start to uh, start to hit a, a little bit harder. I mean, looking at, looking at all those uh, Wilderness Blessings, they definitely want to try to keep pace at least, I can say that much. And because they have probably a slightly weaker laning phase, a little bit of a worse lane clear, I feel like, and it's a bit more dangerous for them to move around, having those in their kit is going to be very helpful when Onyx tries to maybe attack those side lanes. Man, at this point, you know, as we kind of look at things unfold rotation-wise early on, the, the biggest part for this is, do we actually see Devu want to win some of these early fights? Hold on, Sawa already oh. with the damage coming through. First blood going to the hands of Kyrie on this Dyroth jungle pick that we've been talking about for a while now. But, you know, that I guess that just completely gets rid of the question. Yeah. They don't want to really contest this Magister. They're going to be forced to use that ultimate keyboy there alongside Kim Bomba. Still going to be going for it, but Turtle going to be worked on. Boots has to play oh, out. Oh. Goes in with the Bomba Slash. Still going to be working. There's the way of the dragon. The target is a Kid Bomba. Going to get punished as he's taken out as well. Plus the turtle in the hands of Onik. Trex, we got to talk about the power spike coming in from Ani because having this Dire of Jungler, just the emblem setup, having the rupture, you're already having a lot of penetration with this as an emblem. And then he also has the Fury Hammer. There's I'm quite a lot of damage without committing to full items. I mean, my main thing is, I wonder if that flex was kind of very last minute, especially seeing that the mid side was so weak for Deuce Vault, and that's exactly where they target first. Last game, they really tried to target in the XP lane, they messed it up, right? Yep. They get, Kyrie gets caught off guard, but this time, all right, our target is Sawo, our target is Sunset Lover, and they make that work so well. Look at Sans right now, just completely dominating the mid lane, and watch for Kyrie in the mid bush as well. You can already tell that is their focus, disrupt Deuce Vault mid side. Okay, Keyboy should be fine, gets out just perfectly. Once again, Dave Vu, one of the struggles here early on is some of that damage potential, right? It's going to lack a little bit here. They've got to build some time, especially with the Novara. We do know that typically Novara can be found at the top of the damage meters, but still, you have to be able to work around what's being thrown at you from Onik, especially the fact that they've already garnered themselves nearly a 2k lead at this point. And they're still putting the focus here now on the bottom side against Carvey. Yeah. Well, caught by oh, before that match is taking a bit of damage coming in up. Kyrie, there's the hard guard. Magister going to be the focus. The kick comes through. A double kick oh. alongside the hard guard. Magister going to be taken out in a split second once again, even with the hard guard. Now you oh. mentioned the mallet, right? And that's right there. Like, Magister already has the breastplate oh. there. He's able. He should be able to absorb damage. But just being able to shred through that right now. Ooh. Okay. With Kyrie. Imagine if Kid Bomba pushed him towards Sunset Lover and Sunset Lover died. Yeah, that would have been a feels map. <laughs> you know? Feels real bad. Feels bad, man. Uh, one thing that caught my eye as well was before this, we saw the uh, the graphic of Brody going up against the Claude. Just by win rate itself, Claude has 66.67% win rate, and Brody so far in M5 have 33.33. So it's, it's basically half. Right, so Claude has been winning at least double the matches of the Brody. It's funny as for a while, you would only see Claude 2 up against things like the Fermis, up against some of these very tanky compositions. But Claude has been getting picked left and right, no matter what composition. He's been getting favored before many other, before many other uh, marksmen, wow. but Magister. They're going to commit to Sans. He does flicker out, still holding on to the heart guard himself. Kid Bulma going to jump in with a vengeance, but still going to work on it. Boots now has to flicker out. Torn apart, never going to be used. Keep oh. goes in with the way of the dragon. Hard guard there, and there's the final slash again. Carpy going to be taken out. CW jumps in. Guns blazing. And it's sour to fall now. Kid Bomba going to be in trouble as he's taken down in the mid lane. A nice try from Deus Vault there, and I love the fact that they're consistently trying to push even when they're at the deficit, but at some point, you do have to slow it down. If they keep on trying that, it's going to keep hurting. They're in a bad spot here. I think at this point, they need to try to hold on, let Sunset Lover get some items in. We gotta talk about a tempo here, because Onik is not slowing down. Magister keeps trying to find targets, yeah. but... The damage from Dale's Vault is not there, especially if Carvey gets targeted earlier, because even though he has the Blade of Heptasis, the initial hit is going to hurt. But it looks like still not enough, just because Keyboy is there. I mean, they have the mechanics, right? We're seeing them make plays happen, but without that damage, those plays are never going to matter, and Onik is going to be able to outlast you. Sunset Lover now having the Lightning Truncheon. 
I I want to say it's enough for them to deal the damage. But again, they got to find a way to deal the damage. <laughs> I mean, the, the way the past couple of fights have gone, even when they sometimes are the ones initiating it, there just isn't enough right now, right? I, for the most part, even if Kimboma finds the final slash he's looking for, it's kind of uh, troublesome. They have Ooh. more time. Again, he's going to use it, but it's on Keyboy. Now the focus once again. Hard guard can come out from Sans. There's the way the dragon tries oh. to stay alive. Finally, Keyboy will get taken out. But all this, the turtle's going to be worked on by Kyrie. We'll be able to secure the third one of the game. So Devu gets on the board here, but they give up another objective plus this turret. I want to say that's still good coming in from Diaz Volt because yeah. I feel like as a shot caller, it gives you the confidence no matter how bad the call is, if everyone says, okay, we're going to commit, they commit. I like this commit coming in from this All so. right, so taking a look at Sunset Lover, just locked in. Oh, oh. they're going to go for Kid Bomba here. Just taking care of a little overcommitment there from Devu to go for Sans. Kid Bomba the sacrifice right now, yeah. just consistently getting picked off. He has been making some plays. But once again, Deus Vault falling behind almost 5K gold. If this keeps up, the boiling point is going to come soon. Dude, at this point, Onyx is pretty hot already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know how much time this Volt can, can buy. Because, again, in terms of scaling, Claude is one of those heroes that one of the dangers is not just the damage. It's the fact that it's so hard to catch. And with the lineup of Deus Volt, not a lot of people can catch him. And at what point do you, you know, I get that sometimes when you're behind, you want to still play like you're even, you want to try to go for it, but at what point do you really just back off? It's not like they don't have, you know, late game possibilities here. Sadly, you know, the Brody is going to take a while and it might even be too late for him, but wait a second. They're actually going to fight this again for the purple buff. Final Ooh. Slash going to come through. Carvey has the heart guard, but Keyboy going to kick him again with the way of the dragon. Mattis are going to fall. CW jumps in, going, guns blazing. Carvey trying to run back. Has the heals there from Sawo. We'll be fine. No one fell from Onik though. Magister down. Dude, looking at, at, at this, I want to say Dismal still has a chance. Just because they have the Novaria. They can clear the waves. They can buy time. Look at the damage though. Sunset Lover is doing the highest damage here with Carvey as well. But I, I feel like there's still a chance. I still feel Devu can come back from this one. Yeah, def I mean, they're doing a lot of damage, but they're also starting a lot of these fights. They're taking a lot of engagements, and Onik is just winning out in the long haul. Yes, they're letting them t give them some damage, but they're so ahead right now that that damage just isn't enough to take them down. Deus Vault, First Lord coming ooh, up. Key boy. I think there's... Yeah. Look he's, at Keyboy's placement, man. Yeah. He's gonna wait patiently, but I don't think Devu even wants to commit to this. Looks like they're just gonna give it up. They're waiting patiently there. So, Lord gonna go in the hands of Onik. Oh, Carvey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Carvey, very oh. close. Oh. Keyboy, oh. good discipline. Oh. No, 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 no. Oh, oh. okay. Oh. All right, okay. He's he got gonna lucky. be fine. <laughs> we, we set it up. Yep. Now, actually, this might be the response, Keyboy. The slide on through still. Again, this is the deficit showing here. Onik very confident on how they want to play this. Sans holding on to the final slash himself. And this is the adaptability that you see from some of the best Valentina players is how they utilize some of these ultimates from the other side. Now the question is, Trex, what does this Volt have to do? How are they going to make sure that they don't lose much more than what they have already lost? Well, they've been taking these team fights very well. I have to give them that, that even though they are so far behind, most they've been losing is one member at a time in, in large scrims, in long ending scrims. Carvey has been positioning himself greatly. Sunset Lover as well, and Sawo giving them all heals and finding those things perfectly. So I think at this point, if they hang on, and I mean hang on for dear life, Boots, maybe overextends at some point. Or maybe Keyboy overextends at some point. They find that, they wait for this bottleneck to come in, and they, you know, maybe, oh! oh. Again, a final slash gonna be used, but they're gonna go ahead and fight outside in the base. Hard guard already there. Keyboy, though, um, in the back side, gonna get shut down already. Now Boots gonna be the focus. Turk finally goes down. Kyrie gonna oh. jump in, won't be able to land the strike. CW, though, jumps in. Carvey's taken out. Oh. Multiple bodies falling for Devu. Three down. Onik, though, happy with the turret on the bottom side. That final slash coming in from Sans. Disgusting. If, if Kit Bomba finds a five-man final slash, yep. 
It may not be enough, let's, let's be real. But <laughs> it's, a, it's a step in the right direction. But actually, this time, for real though, I feel like what he should do is not a five-man slash. It's just one man. Like, I feel like at this point, pick off Onyx yeah. one by one, and then perhaps that's the way you do it. You have to just get what you can at this exactly. point. You don't want to bring them all in. And here's the thing. I don't I don't see CW getting caught right now. He has been, he's just been so greedy with that Blazing Duet. He always comes in at the very last minute, oh. and it's almost like his target is carving. Another way of the dragon going to be used alongside the guard. Final Slash already using CW, though. Even a half health going to go in. Oh. Boots will fall. Devu striking back here, happy to fight on against Onik. One at a time, man, one at a time. Eventually, everything will be equalized, right? Yeah, but how are they doing? Like, I just can't, I, I'm, even though they're losing, I'm having so much respect for Deuce Fall. They're 10K behind, but they're coming out on a fight, not even under their towers, but, you know, under the purple buff. Numbers is just a concept. Mm. It's not it's, real. It's, it's all about mentality. Exactly. If you don't think you're 10K behind, you're not. It's you're, all about that mentality. Not. Mentality, man, mentality. Numbers are just numbers. That's what I told the Starbucks girl the other day. Really? But she still said I had to pay for the coffee. Yeah. What do you mean it's that much? It's just a number. Maybe it is. So this is what I have. <laughs> I would say, even though it's a concept, it's a very <laughs> popular concept. True. Well, the concept right now, Lord gonna be up. Keyboy in a similar position as earlier. So you're gonna keep Magister at bay here. Turtle, our Lord, already gonna be secured. They force him back, Devu can't really contest these. Given the fact that they're 10K behind, that number is definitely true here. Oh yeah. Like, as much as you want to imagine it's not real, when it hits you, it, it does feel like, oh, that feels like a 10,000 difference. Yep. Yeah, especially when you look at all of the items and how far ahead Onik really yeah. is. I mean, literally, Nobody on the side of Des, Vult, Des Vault is even close right now. Sawo only has two items, only the flask. Ah, Carvey is, Carvey is two items behind. Yeah. Like, basically, a 10,000 goldie means two items difference here. And two items is a lot of items. But somehow, Des Vault still holding on. Hey, pretend it's not real. Pretend it's not real. Right now they got to deal with this Lord. Going to the bottom side, Final Slash can be used for the minions. Help clear it out a little bit faster, but Kid Bomba! Whoa! Watch out away! Boots can go in with a flicker of Prazer's Wrath to clean up the kill. So down Kid Bomba. Lord's still going to be worked on here. Devu holding on to one turret in the mid lane for a little bit longer. Onik waiting patiently for this. Sands in the back side. What can Devu do to hold on here? Heart guard. Gonna be utilized, still gonna be fighting now. Sans goes in on the backside on Carvey, forcing Ooh. him to get back to heal up. They try to hold their own. Still, Boots gonna be the focus. The shots come down. Torn apart memory to follow through. Lord finally gone. Devu though, holds on. Holding on so well. Even Carvey, when he gets targeted there, able, he gets final slash, adjusts over, then flickers back into safety where he's gonna get some health back up. I mean, just their, their micro mechanics and everything that they're doing in these team fights has been so clean. Let's take a look at some of the damage dealt. Sans now taking the lead here, but Carvey and Sunset Love are following so close behind. I would say the way that this Vault is, is grouping up is making it very difficult for Keyboy to select a target. And we know Keyboy can do it. One of the best choke players in the world, but oh. now Magister is getting attacked. You want to fight again. Kyrie going to get Final Slash into the squad. Devu wants to fight Keyboy. here. They're trying to go for it. Keyboy going to get the kick. Carvey could be in trouble here. Can't get away as Sans gets the kill. Boots there trying to keep them at bay. Sans and Kyrie quite low. Sunset Lover trying to shoot down from the distance. Devu still keeping it together despite the 12k deficit. This is why Keyboy is one of the best troll players in the world, man. He found Carvey in that skirmish. I mean, and Deus Volto, that, here's the thing, they weren't like hanging on, they were trying to take that fight. They wanted that fight. They, they kept on pushing forward. All Sunset Lover has to do is actually land one of those meteors onto the back line. She consistently kind of connects onto Keyboy or connects onto Boots here. She needs to find CW or Sans. If Sunset Lover can do that, it, it could be a tide changer. I'm wondering here too, does Devu, is it better just to continue to defend in the base? Don't get caught out, don't get sandwiched, trying to actually contest these lords at this point. I would say because of their poke, they can't contest, but they shouldn't uh, 
go heavy on it. It's like, just scout for Division, try to figure out what's the next plan coming in from Onik, and figure out a way how to disrupt it. Because having the Dire Off, as well as having the uh, Fredrin, they want to engage first. If you can somehow isolate them, then maybe you can do something. Because going for Sans, going for CW, is going to be very, um, how do I say this, very ambitious. If you can get them, then that's great, but you are Whoa. hoping for them to make the mistake. This is going to be the hardest Lord, though, right here. If they can get past this one, then honestly, there could be a hope. We're creeping really far into that late game. See if they can hold it together. Lord, mid side. Hard guard going to be used already. Key Boy going in with a conceal, looking for Carvey once again. Ooh, Flicker nice. on the defense, still going to hold it out together. Final slash going to be used in response. Torn apart memory comes down. They're holding on a cafe for now. Sans goes in with a flicker, finds Kid Bomba. But Devu. They still hold on. They've dealt with the Lord. Now they have to deal with these minions pushing oh. in. Still keeping it together. Oh. The jump in from Kyrie Carvey. Wind of Nature is not going to be enough as he falls. Magister next. And Onik looks to take game number two against Devu. Onik starting things off in this best of five. We have a 2 0. And this time, they didn't make it close. This game, Onik showed their strength. Des Vault hangs on for as long as they can. But Kid Bomba got defused that game. And Onik have the code. They were able to come through and I mean just cleanly execute. Yes, it was definitely a tough battle for them trying to get to that base. I mean it was drawn out. Those fights were moving on and on and on. But Keyboy continuously harassing Carvey, I think, was the answer. The Sky Kings are flying too high. Dale's Vault had trouble bringing them down. It's a tough game to look at here, this one for game number two. Again, you look at game one, that Devu was able to garner that lead. It slipped through their hands, but game two was just not for them here. They couldn't keep up. Maybe it was the draft uh, kind of flexibility that was approached here from this. Again, Dyroth jungle is not something you typically see, mm. right? That was flexed really quickly. Again, Fredrin, first pick, something that we saw from, you know, months ago even, be the norm, has changed up but the flexibility is still what they like to play around. And that's what we saw here once again from Onik, and it's showing just how, you know, I know you love to talk about the mental. This was a very mental draft from Onik, and they executed it very well. Dude, watching that game, I felt mental. But either ways, we gotta talk about the MVP of the game here. And again, big congratulations to Onik for winning the second game. And looks like, <laughs> again, flip your hair! <laughs> flip your hair! Okay. If, uh, uh, come on, Kyrie. If he gets the third one, he's got to flip the hair. He Kyrie, better flip the hair. Kyrie, you better listen here, all right? If you get MVP again, flip your hair. You got to do the combo, though. For the people. Salaman. For the people. 7 0 oh, and 8. And again, a lot of damage coming in from this Dire Off without really be focusing on any items. And honestly, they could have gone for the Frederin, right? But as we're talking about the mental game, yeah. I think that it changes the pace. It forces Dave Voodoo to adapt to something different this time and adapt to a different type of aggressive Kyrie that he wasn't able to be last game. Yeah, again, the little ignition as well just ensures the kills. Yeah, it's lethal. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the highlights here, though, for this game number two. This is, all, this is where it all started. Yeah, this is definitely the tipping point. Onik immediately asserting dominance. And Devu, I mean, throughout the whole game, willing to still fight even where they're behind. But Keyboy consistently getting those kicks. And here's one of the players they focus on consistently. It was Kid Bomba. Carvey as well, having a rough time. And getting that first death, I mean, at five minutes in, starts to slow him down. And it's not something you want to see on a Brody. Do it again. In this game, it's really about how Onik they just hold the map all the way through. And I kind of feel like there's Vault, certain skirmishes that they went for did seem a little bit forced. It looked like they were much more... It's like in their head, they have way more damage. But I kind of feel like it really wasn't enough. And I feel like that's the big difference maker. If they had enough damage, I kind of feel like this oh. game would have been much more closer because they engaged a lot in the early transitioning into the mid game. But unfortunately, again, yeah. miscalculated. I like what they did here. Like, even looking at this, the fact that they were down so much in gold, Devu still tried to fight, right? Tried to keep things together, tried to somehow get back into this game. But again, when you're talking about this massive of a lead, it really starts to show, right? Numbers 
are, you know, they're true. And you saw it unfold there no matter how much they tried to hold on. One thing as well that I said during the last defense, going for CW, going for Sans is very ambitious. And that's the mistake coming in from Carvey. He went for Sans and that put him in a bad position for him to get caught and he couldn't help the, the defense. Something else to point out here, even though Devu held on for dear life that game, there's something very clear about Onyx's victory here. They didn't lose a single tower, they didn't yeah. lose a single lord, and they didn't lose a single turtle. I mean, overall, just completely smothering Devu. And this is one of your points in the very, very beginning before all these matches started, LaFell. Onyx, even when it seems like maybe they're having a little trouble here and there, they are still always very clearly winning. We got to talk about the War Axe on Kyrie here as well. Not going for that Hunter Strike where you already have a flat penetration. Instead, going for that War Axe where your penetration is ramping mm. up. I kind of feel like it's because of the Boxia to ensure that, okay, this Boxia is going to take a little bit of time for him to take down. And the ceiling for the War Axe is much higher than the Hunter Strike. So I feel like this is a smart choice. Definitely probably one of the main reasons why Magistore was consistently getting melted down. Not only that, but Kid Bomba as well. I mean, Kid Bomba was pretty tanked up here, ready to deal with that, but still constantly getting shredded. He tried his best, but was never able to really hang out in the front lines. Yeah, yeah the war axe didn't work, man. Yeah, it did work. And, uh, you know, when you see this Sarlot picked up, you really are trying to play around that final slash. And early on, it looked like there would have been some moments for him to turn the tide with great final slash setups. But unfortunately, like we were talking about, that damage department was lacking early on for Devu. And with Onik punishing him in the early game, it scaled very heavily in their favor. Yeah, looking at the carry here, Carvey did the most damage. So we do see that Devu, they did scale up. They had the potential, but Onik just keep on surviving, man. They how do I say this? They spread out the damage quite well, making sure that Devu couldn't focus on one target. They had to spread their damage. And they would have consistently attack Carvey, like first Keyboy would go, then CW would, you know, uh, blazing duet into the backside onto, onto Carvey. Then in comes Sans, and Carvey was just constantly getting attacked from like all sides. So as you said, the damage that he's sending out is getting spread. And I think because of that, Carvey was never really able to get those final hits. He wasn't able to put enough damage, and every time he popped off the uh, Torn Apart Memories, yeah. he couldn't get a finish. We gotta talk about how now it's match point. Hmm. How does Dale's Volt 